She has appeared in numerous PWBA telecasts this season, but off the lanes, not on them. Today, she ended up Keith Lee's reporting to someone else, as she's our top seed looking for title number five in the PWBA St. Petersburg Clearwater Open right now. I'm Shannon O'Keefe, and you're watching the PWBA on CBS Sports Network. It's time, Boeing fans, for the 10th event of the 2017 PWBA Tour season. We started this tournament with 82 bowers representing 16 countries. We're down to four, set to compete for a tour title and prize money. Here's the step ladder bracket, the number four seed, Colombian superstar Clara Guerrero. She'll take on former major champion, one of the tour's top young stars, and Danielle McEwen. Number two seed, Giselle Poss of Montgomery, Illinois, former Vanderbilt standout, looked for her first career title today. Our top seed, four-time winner, and head coach at national champion McKendry University, Shannon O'Keefe. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the Great Bowling on CBS Sports Network. It's great to have you with us. Dave Ryan alongside Kelly Kulik, six-time major champ, joined as well throughout the broadcast by Hall of Famer Carolyn Doran Ballard. A couple of players Kelly Reese is seeing on TV, Clara Guerrero and Shannon O'Keefe, have not made appearances until today. Let's start with Clara. Injuries have set her back. Yeah, at the end of last year in December, she suffered a minor ankle, ankle injury, spraining at one of the events, and then she has a pull tendon in her middle finger. She taped it up all year long, made some cashers around in top 12s, but as you said, this is her first telecast appearance of the season. And Shannon O'Keefe has done a great job as a commentator on CBS Sports Network throughout the year on PWBA broadcast, but she'd rather be winning tournaments on TV, right? Yeah, it's great to see Shannon back on the lanes. You know, for the viewers back home, there's a small percentage of women that actually bowl full-time. They forget that some of the women out here have part-time and full-time jobs. Shannon wears two hats, coaching all season long. It was a lot of traveling for Sunday, come back Thursday, compete, wear and tear. But she's here for her first telecast of the season, leading this event. And she's our top seed, so right now she's not going to be doing the interviewing, but she'll be interviewed by Carolyn Doran Ballard. I'm standing here with Shannon O'Keefe. Wait, wait a minute. Shannon, aren't you supposed to be holding the microphone? I don't know. Aren't you supposed to be doing interviews? <laughs> I got tired of that, so I decided it was time for me to learn how to bowl again. So it, um, it's been a, a long season. It's been really challenging, and it feels really good to be back on this side of the microphone for once. Well, tell us a little bit about the success. You bowled great all week. Uh, you're leading the tournament, um, which you have done before. So tell us a little bit about what you're going to do going into your title match. I'm really just going to concentrate on executing 10 great shots. That's really my game plan. If I can ex execute 10 great shots, it's a game, and anything can happen in a game. I already feel like I've won this tournament bowling like I did the entire week. So this would just be icing on the cake to pull out the win today. Well, good luck to you. Back to you, Dave. All right, Carolyn and Shannon, a couple of our colleagues, but one is bowling today, going for a PWBA Tour title. Clara Garrell would like one as well. Bowling on CBS Sports Network is next. Great first matchup to start our show. Here today on CBS Sports Network, Guerrero McEwen. Step ladder bowling, PWBA Tour. Five years old from Stony Point, New York, north of Manhattan. She hasn't seen much of home this past season, traveling frequently on the road. You guys are also busy. Competing, yep. Watch out, and that's in the channel. Oh my goodness. Shaky start. Four step approach. Swing definitely outside the slot. Well, she gets a second chance. That's the good news. Getting out of your system. That's a lot better. Knocks down nine. Just got to forget about that, Kelly. Right, move on. Absolutely. First frame out of the system. Nothing can be worse than the gutter ball, so made up for it. Pocket shot, seven pin leave. Lara Guerrero, longtime star for Team Columbia, now lives in the Austin, Texas. Last year's PWBA Players Championship winner. She defeated Liz Johnson for that title. Right lane wiggles the 10 pin. But out of the gate, first shot on TV for this season. As we mentioned, she's been around all year long making her first telecast. Describe that finger injury to us last night in our pre-match chat. Really painful, it sounded like it was bad. Tendon problem that just wouldn't go away. She taped it up all season long. 
And finally, about halfway through it, it eased up. The pain had gone away. Just nudges the 10 pin. Takes care of business with the spare. Future for the sport lane pattern today, Kelly. Now, Dave, if you look at the pattern itself, we, we kind of call this the Marvel 4 pattern. It looks like the shape of a number 4. 40 feet, very high volume. You're going to see many of the girls play very, very straight outside the gutter where Danielle was playing earlier. It's just going to keep creeping inside and inside. And unfortunately, as the week progressed, they got a little wet dry. So occasionally it overbounced to the right, but stayed online. You could miss inward and still hit the pocket. Ah, late tap on number 10. A little lucky there for Clara. That works out. Look right here. She's at the break point at 5-6. Can see the ball already rolled out. Mixer takes out the seven. Look at the six pin. Oh, I think that was the two pin that came back over four pin just to mix around and roll enough to gently timber the 10. Danielle, that's a lot better. Right lane strike. Let's go back to Carolyn. Well, Danielle and Clara are, are mostly going to play the lanes slightly similar because they like to go very direct. They actually look for the hold. Clara at this point, though, has the left lane hooking a lot more. She's playing them four to five boards different. She's chosen a strong symmetrical ball to try to get the ball to read the lane just a little bit better and smooth out the transition. Both girls felt the lanes broke down very quickly. Again, the hook spot on the left lane they felt was much more dramatic than the right lane. The right lane seemed tighter down lane already, and it's only the third frame. Great indication there, Carolyn, as well. You can see once the ladies lay the ball down on the lane, you'll see it start to pick up instantaneously but it does not change direction harshly. It stays on, on its targeted path. And I believe over the course of the next seven or eight frames that who can carry the best will be the victor in this match. Clara's stats to date. Got her to the show. Looks for an 11 pin lead early. Comes in high, leaves a four pin. There's that hold Carolyn was talking about. Ball hits the pocket at the 1-3, high on the head pin. Two pin skates itself around. Four pin remains. Makeable spares. You saw Clara average 220. She controlled the pocket all week long. Right on cue, <laughs> side of the pin. But gets it done. Clara's game, very sound fundamentals, a four-step approach. She kind of starts with her right step first, gets the ball late in the swing. She likes to have a little bit of control. Left arm goes out to the side. Watch her head tilt. Great leverage there with her arm. Her head never deviates. She's got great spine tilt to the right. Solid at the foul line. We look for two back angles, one tilted off to the side towards the bowler's arm swing and one also at the waist going forward at the foul line to maintain that maximum amount of leverage. Yeah. Held pocket nicely and takes care of 10 pins. That one she got a little bit right down the lane. Watch this shot. Off her hand a little bit inside and out. You can see it hits about seven, eight, but wow, it skates a little bit over here to the right outside of her target. The strong asymmetric bowling ball recovers, rolls forward towards that one three. Danielle averaged 223, just three pins higher than Clara. Looking good after that really rough start in the channel with her first ball. Recovering nicely. Any player who rolls a 300 game during today's telecast will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. I can't say first time jitter. She's been in this spot before. Maybe the lights being on TV itself. 
But it's done and over with. She moved on. Third show of the year for Danielle. That comes in high. 3 6 10 stand. There are a few similarities from some of the patterns recently. But the girls that were straighter were able to play closer towards the gutter. You could see the ball change direction about three feet sooner down here as it starts to migrate in towards the pocket. But that one again was a little bit high. Resulting in the 3 6 10 spare. Cross lane with the spare ball. No problem. All three down. Good mark. Laura seems so relieved when we talked to her about overcoming the injury, how frustrating it was not to be 100%. Well, these two ladies, Clara and Danielle, both, this is their full-time occupation, both representing their country as well as bowling individually. Clara, Team Columbia for 20 years. Starts pretty far right there, and all 10 down. Right about four at eight. Up the lane a little bit out to in. And I mean a little, just a touch. She does start very far to the right, probably starting on board two. As you can see, she drifts left, sliding at 11. Readjusts with the heel, seven, eight at the arrows. Hand is on the side of the ball. She's able to keep it the lane, or I should say the line right in front of her. Direct towards that one, three. Clara, sixth frame, looks for the turkey, has all 10 down. Got a 14 pin lead. Conclusion of match number one, McEwen Guerrero. When we return, great PWBA bowling action on CBS Sports Network is on the way. All right, Kelly, we're heading toward the season ending event in Richmond, Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship, and you will be part of it. I will. The excess means ladies already secured a spot. Clara Guerrero on today's show in ninth place. Some tightness there with the points from Shannon Blahowski, Maria Clara, Shannon O'Keefe as well. The cut line, Leanne Holsenberg, the Hall of Famer, a 3,000 point lead over Missy Parkin. Stephanie Johnson secured her spot by winning last week. And of course, international players. Players not only competing to qualify with the top two point leaders, will automatically advance to the TV finals at the Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship September 3rd through the 6th at Richmond International Raceway. Join us on CBS Sports Network Wednesday, September 6th, 8 Eastern for the TV finals. Tickets available now, and you can join the conversation all season on social media by using hashtag Road to Richmond. We can't wait. Oh, that's going to be an exciting event. They're building four lanes for us, specifically for this event itself. We'll have a fantastic crowd supporting it alongside the race coming up that Saturday evening. Dale Earnhardt's retirement party. Some fantastic events going to occur that week. Ours is one of them. Danielle appeared in Orlando as well. Inside. Nice shot, baby split. 3-10. Coming off the break. Slides about 11 at the foul line. You can see her shoulder just closes forward at the bottom of the swing, missing inward. Nice cover. Are you looking for some great PWBA gear? Then visit the official online store of the PWBA at shoppwba.com. Now, we move ahead of the eighth frame. Left lane just weak enough. Knocks out the 10 for the seven pin conversion. Initially when she went to see doctors about that tendon injury, she told us last night, they said, take the season off. You don't want to bowl at all this year. She <laughs> said, I can't do that. This, this is my livelihood. I need to 
compete on the PWBA tour, but she was not herself. It took a long time to, with rehab, changing her grip, adjusting her game to avoid too much pain. She did a lot of back and forth, as you said, with her grip. Earlier in the season in January, she tried, reverted back to her old span, and then even adjusted that one. She's feeling fine right now. That's the good news for Clara. Zell Poss, first ever TV show. Recent grad from Vandy. A great program there in Nashville. Number two seed. Worked with Coach Josie Ernest Barnes. Now competes alongside of her. Danielle needs this. Two pin. Light two pin. That right lane down the lane at about 40 to 45 feet. There's a little bit of a hang spot. Slight little puddle, almost as if the lane is going upward and ramps up in ball speed. Have to find a way to get away from that spot. Down by 18. We take a look at the right lane. Here's 15 feet. Here's the 30 foot marker. Right about 45 feet at board seven. There's a little bit of a puddle here as I shade it in. And when the ball hits that puddle, it just wants to hydroplane and push even more. So instead of going this way, it pushes through the spot and goes straight towards the three pin. Foundation frame for Danielle. That crosses all the way over. Missed the one three pocket. And it's just the opposite in the left lane where the puddle is on the right. The left lane has a lot of friction. You got ice and asphalt on the left lane and you just see the ball just pick up and change direction even harshly. That would be a tire change or possibly equipment change. 6'10 spare. Has that. Staying clean. Keep in mind, these are the best bowlers in the world. Mm -hmm. And they are adjusting strategy, making adjustments as they go. And sometimes you just don't guess right. I once was told 10 frames is a lot of frames. And also told 10 frames is not enough frames. That's bowling. That is. <laughs> That's the sport. Our sport, how it's designed, and the person that figures out faster is usually the victor. 20 pin lead for Clara. Trying to shut the door. Ninth frame. Comes in high. Avoids trouble. Just the three pin. If you notice, Clara does wear a wrist device. Makes a subtle change when she's going straight at their spares. Last year, I remember she used to take it off whenever she would shoot a spare. This year, she just makes a modification with it. And she's able to back off her hand and go straight at the spares. Could be something she's helped to work on that tendon in her finger. Nineteen pin lead for Clara going into tenth frame. Very solid on this left lane. One mark to shut out Danielle McEwen and advance to that semifinal match against Giselle. Could hear her say stop. Saw the ball go down the lane, hit that friction spot, change directions. Watch right here, she's playing left to right. Seven, eight the hours, you can see her get it to about board four or five. Picks up into a heavy roll as it rolls forward. And when it does roll forward, it leaves a more makeable spare than if it's still hooking when it hits the pocket. Most often enough, it's a split. Clara does have enough pins. She'll win this one. And climb the ladder. Trying for a championship. <laughs> Just keep it on the lane. She'll be good. She could try something here in the 10th frame if she wanted to. It's something I would do. 
Just you, I was just going to ask you, are you a proponent of that? Yeah, I would. I mean, she's got the match tied up. I would try a different ball just to see what the look gives me. Clara Guerrero, back from injury. Number four seed has a victory over Danielle McEwen. Trying to win another championship. Giselle Poss is next. This match, 215-198 over Danielle McEwen. We'll take on Giselle Poss next. So Kirchberg is here, Senior Business Development Manager at St. Petersburg Clearwater Sports Commission. Thanks to Sarah and great staff hosting the event that part of the Sunshine State. I'm at Cocoa Beach, it's across state from where I am, but West Coast, awesome too. It was, it's places like that that I really love my job. Really do. Vitamin D in the best source. The Zelpa's first ever TV shot. Not far from Chicago. Debut unfolds here. Ooh, two, four, eight, ten. The women didn't really have to migrate too far inward near that second arrow at all until we got to the burn. And this is an event that we did have what's called a burn squad. So the lanes again were oiled Friday morning for competition. They were left to sit at the break. And when we returned Friday night, we bowled what remained. Leave and the 10 pin stance. So, an early open for Giselle. First TV frame of her career, only 22 years old. What adjustments do you see Clara making here, Kelly? Well, she's still going to try to play the same part of the lane. If anything, she's going to creep, and I mean really creep. One, two boards, maybe slightly inward, keep her ball speed firm, and possibly pay attention to what Giselle is doing. Giselle is left of her, and it will make Giselle's track even stronger. Keep up the ball speed and just keep moving in. Instead, high shot, big four is the result. Now Giselle had time to practice on the TV pair. Clara has a chance to go over on the practice lane and stay loose. The transition does occur even at the commercial break. Starting a little bit further left, sliding about 11 still, six, seven up the lane. See how it has a sharp break at the back portion of the lane. Again, it's a 40-foot pattern, high volume. Okay. Matching opens to begin our second match. Clara broke through last year, her first PWBA Tour title at the Go Bowling PWBA Players Championship, a 199-175 win over Liz Johnson. Pretty exciting, first title. Was a major. CBG do interviews, I'm <laughs> ready to go. You can see right there, she does make a giant step left, moves further inside. But as the girls practice, they used a lot of service with aggressive bowling balls, and it really just burns up the track. Her lay down point, around 10, 11, gets it to about six, seven. She's five out here, but now it's really gonna go sharp at the end of it. Watch as it checks up and rolls heavy on pin number one. Problem for the spare. That skid hood hook roll face. A lot of skid, quick hook into that early roll. Giselle on the right lane. A little bit of a puddle down lane. See how she manages TV pair. Right lane. Six and O in match play. We did see that last week with Birgit.
our two seed. Find the range, can't find that one three pocket cleanly. Two eight double wood remaining for Giselle Poss. Psychology major at Vanderbilt, just graduated this year. Part of a Southland Conference championship team at Vandy. I'm sure we're going to see much of her next year as well on the ladies tour. She's been able to travel with her parents too. Great support system when you have your family with you. Makes the 2-8. The two ladies, Giselle, a little bit firmer with her ball speed and a heavier hand, higher rev rate than Clara. Would normally give a bowler a slight advantage. Left the two four five eight, or excuse me, two four eight ten last time for her first shot. Let's see what the adjustment is. She told us last night it was a mixture of nerves and excitement. First career TV show. Looks like things are settling down for Giselle Poss. A strike there, back to Carolyn. Both girls were seeing the lanes similar. Giselle did not see a difference at first, although she did think that the left lane was hooking up a little bit sooner, as you could see there. She is going to be a little left of Clara, and she is going to continue to make her moves to the left. Again, not throwing it to the right, but making sure she just keeps her angles a little bit more open and feeding it to that spot because now it's gotten very dry in the middle part of the lane. Clara on the right lane is going to move left again and actually try to open up a little bit. But as you could see, the left lane now, according to Rob, is now starting to catch up. So it's, it's almost like it's opposite because one of them started a little bit tighter down lane and hooked earlier and now vice versa. So they're actually catching up and moves will have to be made and angles will have to change. Yeah, we're gonna see that a lot through the next seven frames as well as the championship finals. Who can move the quickest with Shannon O'Keefe on deck coming in? She's firm ball speed, likes to keep her angles in front of her. Clara's a little bit softer. Giselle's similar to Shannon O'Keefe. Just keep paralleling left to left to left and just again control the one three. Not a high scoring event. Converts the four pin. And it's characteristics of a center too, Dave. You know, pair to pair, say you bowl on 9 and 10, you move to 11 and 12. 11 hooks more than 12, but on 9 and 10, 10 hooked more than 9. It's just the way the centers are, the amount of traffic they have throughout a season. Some of the lanes in front of the desk get more play, open play. And even though they're dressed the same, there's still the topography issues with characteristics that make them play just that subtly different. Big move on the left lane. Yeah, come on. Swishy strike. Three pin stand fall late. You'll take it gladly. Watch right here. When she plays left, she walks straighter. But eight nine at the arrows, you can see, woo, three four board. You watch the white pin on the bowling ball as it stands up and rolls forward. You can see as the ball gets into that roll phase as it migrates towards the pocket. TV debut for Giselle. I'm gonna want your memories of your first show after the shot. You're gonna laugh. <laughs> Help on the 10 pin, down it goes. Let me take a look at that shot right here. Look at her foot slide. Hand, look at the orange pin on the ball. See as it's getting taller and taller as it goes down the lane. Straight patches a little angle. Six pin almost stands itself up in the gutter. And guess what? Knock, knock. It's over. All right, memories. First show. First show, World Team Challenge. First ball ever threw, just like Danielle today, in the gutter. No. But I spared it. <laughs> I did. It's a good bounce back. Yes, it was. Giselle for the three bagger. Catches the turkey. Clara's now down 22 pins, almost halfway through semifinal match. 
But this can cut it to 12, working on a strike here for Clara. It was just so clear to see the relief in her eyes and hear it in her voice when she talked about being healthy again. Yes. Ready to go. 100%. Here she is. First time on TV this year. Long, lingering finger injury. This wouldn't go away. Fifth frame. It's got to come back. It did. It Down 12. Started at board 12, sliding 14, gets it 7-8, further right down the lane. I talked about that puddle earlier. Well, you either have to play it to your advantage or go around it. Clara's going around it. First year in 2015, the rekindling of the ladies' tour, she qualified 11th in points, made it to the finals. Last year, 6th, and currently she's in ninth position. A win here would definitely bump up that ranking. And a win, of course, would also guarantee her into that race to Richmond, season finale event for the Players' Championship. Had to hurry, it did. All 10 down for Clara Guerrero. We got ourselves a great match in match number two on CBS Sports Network. Rizelle Poss, the rookie from Vanderbilt, has just a slight lead on Clara Guerrero. Great scenery, Tampa State Pete area, Seminole Lanes in Seminole, Florida. Channel stats, we talked about top of the broadcast, 82 entries from all over the world. Shannon O'Keefe is the number one seed trying for a title. Other finishers, let's break them down here, Kelly. Uh, Rocio Restrepo, an earlier winner in the season. Stephanie Johnson, as we just saw last week, capturing off her 2017 victory. Erin McCarthy, Liz Johnson, U.S. Open shows. Diana Zabiala, our Queens champion, and a newcomer, she's been out a few years, Katie Sutfin, as well as some of the other international players. We just, amazing the amount of talent, not only in the U.S., but internationally that come to compete on the ladies' tour. Camilla from Aruba, Colombia, so many countries represented. Liz Johnson's won two majors. On her way to player of the year. Brilliant season. Michelle <laughs> Poss, a brilliant shot. Her best of the day, all 10 back. Yeah, I would take Liz this season. Giselle has a four step style. Very athletic, very fit. Could see her slide, watch her hand release. Seven, eight, the arrows. Maintains the balance, as we call posting the shot to the ball hits the pins. Smile on the young lady's face. She knows how good a shot that was. Extends her lead back to 12 pins now over Clara. How did that seven not fall down? <laughs> little over three pounds the pins are. You just need a little bit more gravity. Watch here, head pin off the sidewall. Two goes into the four. And instead of the four pin diagonally going into the seven, it dangles in front. Giselle's mom is from Puerto Rico, so she's been on the Puerto Rican national team for the last three years, but she does not speak Spanish. She understands. Doesn't speak so well. Hmm. Something to work on. Watch out. Oh. oh. Whiffed on the seven. Open frame in the seventh. So after Clara was down, she now extends the lead by one pin. Clara steps up here in a good spot. Looks for the four bagger. Seventh frame, but the right lane has not been too kind to her so far. Try to flip the script here. Come on. Yeah. Does. No trouble there. Nice shot. Fire figured a way to avoid that little puddle down the lane, about 43 feet. She goes around it. Her footwork walks to the left. Her hand on the side of the ball. Watch the white pin on the ball. As it gets taller and taller, heavy roll, you watch as it goes off the pin deck, it goes right towards the eight pin. You want to split that eight, nine, or have that continuation off to the left. Ball's maintained. Very good energy. 
as it goes into the roll phase. Ring around the collar or ring around the ten pin. Great shot, though. Great camera action as we see the ball hit the one three. Three goes straight back into the six as it wraps itself around the ten. So you'll feel good about that shot. Watch her eyes. They just never blink. Her intensity is strong. Her focus is keen. Intense stare down <laughs> of her aim spot. I have so much respect for Claire. I mean, not only a fantastic bowler, but a, a fantastic person. The winner of this match will go on to face your tournament leader, Shannon O'Keefe, as she qualified first, averaging 230, looking for her first win of this season, her fifth title overall. Shannon and Brian O'Keefe are pretty busy. We'll tell you about their schedules. She's bowling. So pause, look out. Ooh. Oh, 60-foot lane, 39 boards wide. Little puddle at that end. Great hand action. Right about there. Eight there. It's my squiggly line. You see it try to change direction, but it wants to push at the end of the pattern an extra two feet. Two, four, eight, ten. And she has to finish on this lane for the tenth frame. Ten stands, open frame. Now down by 21 pins. I said Giselle, very athletic. You don't let her stature fool you. She's got a lot of power, generates a lot of ball speed. I love her shoulder at the butt. She goes through her swing, doesn't get pulled down from the top of the swing. It falls, her shoulder drops underneath as her forearm stays inside which gives her that great hand action at the bottom of her swing. Like that. Coach Kelly saw that one all the way. Perfect release, 60 feet to success. For Giselle Poss, our number two seed. Keeping things interesting. Here comes Clara though, foundation frame with a real chance. Thinking back to Clara's success last year at the Go Bowling Players Championship, she just stayed clean. Controlled the pocket just as she is right now. If she just fills frames, no opens, she'll continue to cruise along. Queen, since the first frame, had her open in this match. All 10 back. 21 pin lead, max score of 236. Giselle can shoot best, 185, 215 in the 10th frame if she strikes out. We said, I said, there's that puddle, that little slippery spot agent. Clara's find a way to actually get on the outside of it, wrap itself around. She's matching up so well with her rev rate and ball speed right now. Saw what she needs. That's how you start it. That's enough for Clara. There's a smile. Heard quite a bit of the strike song, haven't we? Yes, <laughs> we match. have. She will go on to face Shannon. A four bagger and six strikes for the match. Clara Guerrero. She needs a good count on Looking this. Looking good. On this shot. Five or six pins will do it. Ten will really do it. This match is over. Clara Guerrero 
Knocks off the rookie in her first ever TV show, Gazelle Poss. Now Guerrero will take on Shannon O'Keefe, our top seed. At stake, a tour championship. Our young fans love a lot of fun. I love those hats, signs. They're just awesome. Giselle Poss, number two seed. Tough loss, joined now by Carolyn. Giselle, great bowling all week. Let me ask you a question. Uh, recent Vanderbilt graduate, your coach, Josie Barnes, competes out here, champion on the PWBA Tour. What did you take from your collegiate experience and brought it here to the PWBA Tour to make you so successful? Really just the competition, the sheer amount of competition and the amount of women here bowling are, I mean, there's Hall of Famers like yourself. And I mean, um, so I'm just trying to take what I learned from college and then apply it to the tour because patterns are extremely hard. Okay, what do you think is one of the keys to your success? Um, just I need to be aggressive with my shot, and I have to have confidence in every shot that I throw. I have to believe in myself. Um, otherwise, I just I don't bowl as well. So I have to take that and apply it to every single shot. Excellent. Well, we'll see you next year. Good luck in your future endeavors. Back to you, Dave and Kelly. Carolyn, thanks so much. Giselle, as Kelly said, will be back. <laughs> we'll see a lot of her. Kelly likes her game. Ready now, championship match. Shannon O'Keefe back on center stage. A great job as our broadcast commentator throughout the year, but she'd much rather be right here as the top seed going for a title. Look at the intensity on her eyes. She's ready. First shot. Two pin. She was the higher seed. She chose to start first, so she will finish the match in the 10th frame. As we get closer to that, little light in the left lane, at least the two pin. No problem there. She and husband Brian live in O'Fallon, Illinois, not far from St. Louis. And they are very busy people. <laughs> I mean, Kelly, your schedule I thought was nuts. Yeah, they are. I mean, Brian, I think, said he was home a total of 17 days since April. I counted mine, I think, was 15. Unbelievable season how extended it was. But she's here for the show. Clara, as you saw, defeated Danielle in the first match, Giselle in the second. Championship title match. First rank for Clara, right lane. Clara's got all 10 down. So we added up your schedule days, and I think it was about 64% of the year you're going to be on the road. I mean, people in women's bowling, you're working hard. Yes, Constant. we are. It's, it's not only about being on tour and rolling the ball down the lane the 14 weeks out of the season. It's the clinics. It's the appearances. It's the obligations with our companies and sponsors to be at certain events and be a smiling face and an educator and a coach. We have so many more obligations aside from just throwing the bowling ball. Clara is one of the ladies does it full time and she finds time to work out happily married but again also dedicated and travels much from the season. With Josh Kubiak Clara's husband rooting her on today. Hi Josh. Able to make the trip out for the telecast. Yeah, as I mentioned in the opening, Shannon, from April, two weeks in Baton Rouge for both collegiate finals, tour season, obligated to go back and work a full-time job Monday through Wednesday, fly out Wednesday night or Thursday morning. Um, I do have under authority that she has booked a vacation. A what? A vacation for her and her husband, Brian, in December to either Jamaica or somewhere on an island stranded by themselves without bowling balls. That sounds really good. But right now, she's struggling, a two-pin on the right lane. Amped up the ball won speed. the women's title that we broadcast this year on CBS Sports Network, the ITC. And the NCAA. Wow, sweep, what a year. And just a young program itself. Chance the coach there, Brian coaches on the men's side. They won the title a year ago, this year runner-up to Weber International. Shannon's game, also a Team USA member. Love her game. Four-step approach, gets the ball in the swing later than traditional style bowling, steps heel-toe on that third step, backswing a little bit high, but you can see both of her legs are together to here, which creates a lot of power. She has 
sheer athleticism. Hits herself in the back with her follow through as much as she likes to really accelerate at the bottom of her swing. She's just so athletic. Ball turned out for Shannon. In college at Portland State in Oregon, she was an All-American softball player. Really good all-around athlete growing up. Looks to say perfect. Yeah. And so the triple of four. Wow, where did that pin come from? Oh, let's see here. Sliding 14 15 at six at the break point. Something from behind as we get to the pins here. Ooh, I think that was eight pins, seven. I can't even tell. It was so quick. Head pin backs off the sidewall, comes around. Any player rolls a 300 game during today's telecast will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, tips from the pros for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport of stop. bowling. Stop. Wants that one to stop. And that's the reason. Yeah, trips the four on the right pin, on the right lane itself. The left lane, she's had very well under control most of the match, even in previous matches. You could see as it really checks hard off the spot, rolls forward, high in the head pin. Three, six, seven. Hit to the right side of the three pin and try to slide it over just in front of the seven enough to knock it down. She's focused. Top conversion, yes! What a shot from Clara Guerrero. That was sweet. Three, six, seven. Pinpoint precise execution. Straight with the spare ball. Clip the right side of the three pin. Didn't need the sidewall or anything directly into the seven pin. Makes it look routine. Nice. What a momentum boost that is. Tough conversion. Keith, fourth frame. Trying to get all 10 down. That's a good answer. Yes, it is. If you watch Flyers ball, she's playing the skid hook roll. Shannon's just kind of playing mostly skid towards the pocket. Ball is very much on line for a long period of time. You can see she wipes off the oil from the ball, keeping it on its path. She kicked off the 2015 season, making it to that last event, Players' Championship in eighth. Last year, won two events out on the Ladies' Tour with a fifth point ranking. And where she is right now, a win here will definitely bump her up in those ranks and qualify her for that championship. Ooh, 4-7. Very, very direct. She'll go to the plastic ball for the spare. Four seven covers nicely, has her spare. Let's look at the approach of these two. Same lane, Kelly. Yeah, so here are both players on the right lane. So we take a look at their back swings. Shannon sliding about 12-13. Clara a little deeper over here. So their lay down point is about six or seven boards outside their ankle. Clara about six down here. Shannon two boards inside of her playing again, very direct. You can see the ball tip up more for Clara as it rolls and changes direction. Shannon's more firmly up the lane, just keeping it direct towards that one three. Six frame, trying to go up by 20 pins. With strike, which she almost gets, but a 10-pin stands. 
Fantastic adjustment by Clara. Makes the correct move by moving deeper inside after that high hit, but a flat 10 pin. Former collegiate star at Wichita State. And her team Columbia record speaks for itself. Oh. Just extraordinary. I mean, the trophy case. Yes, <laughs> multiple, just multiple from pages. Team Columbia. You take up quite a bit of room. If you saw in recent telecasts, all those fantastic fans out there, her and Rocio Restrepo won the doubles, the World Games, defeating myself and Danielle McEwen in the title match. Sorry to bring that up, Kelly, but still, silver's good. Guerrero trying to be great today and beat Shannon O'Keefe and win a title on CBS Sports Network. There's Brian O'Keefe, Shannon's husband, head coach, Junior Team USA, head coach, McKendry Men, ball rep. Uh, this guy's schedule is unbelievable. We were talking about a pre-match. I mean, Shannon traveled the world, either competing, coaching, repping, Broadcasting, yes. Shannon's case. We used to Something have seasons. With bowling. We used to have an off season, years and years ago, and now it's just a continuous, ongoing job. Right lane, should I let it roll? Ten pin leave. So only down by eleven pins. As you mentioned, David, it's going to be a close match going into that tenth frame. Shannon, seventh place U.S. Open earlier this year. Plano, Texas, she was so frustrated, bowled really well, just missed the show. Won by Liz Johnson, fourth straight U.S. Open. <laughs> Shannon won her first individual tour title last year, nationwide PWBA Sonoma County Open with a 246-203 win over. I'm sorry, Kelly, I'm sorry, we it's just, it's the facts, over Kelly Kulik. Celebration time for Shannon. You know, all I can say, well, congratulations to Shannon for Absolutely. that victory. She bowled for We're putting in a tough day. spot here. Yes. Uh, you know, hey, my name is mentioned a lot, even yes. if it is second that, place. That's but a good thing. I'm just going to say right now, Dave, you can quote me on it. There's more to come for oh. me. All right, Kelly. Look forward to that. Absolutely. Oh. 7-10. As we said before, we love having you in the booth, but we want to see you out there I and winning titles on TV. As as much as I enjoy talking about it, I do want to be throwing it. But Shannon O'Keefe right now, as you see the ball hits the pocket, deflects slightly. Watch the ball. As it goes to the right towards the 9-pin instead of to the left side of it where it would split the 8-9. Ball is utilizing a lot of energy. And when it gets to the back portion of it, just doesn't have enough retention in it to go through the pins. It deflects off of it. 24-pin lead now for Clara. Looking good. Seventh frame. Works on a spare. Long comeback from the finger injury, nearly complete yep. for a title. That's amazing. Laser focus. Right lane. Big shot. Oh. Ten pin. Let's go back to Carolyn. Both ladies were seeing the lanes wet dry. What Shannon opted to do was use a, a ball that's very smooth, but loaded with surface so that if she did hit the dry, hopefully it rolled off of it, yet would still roll in the oil if she got it in. Clara's making it very simple. She does not want to change balls. She feels comfortable with what she has. She will increase her ball speed and keep it more in front of her and try to use the dry to her advantage. A couple ways to attack wet drives, as Carolyn mentioned, that's it. We call it playing the shim out on tour, and what that means is what Shannon O'Keefe is exactly doing. She's keeping it directly on line, just on the edge of the oil and the dry, the wet being inside of her, the dry being outside of her. Clara is using that friction down the lane and actually using it that if she gets it there with an aggressive ball and more cover, it will just migrate slowly and change direction and roll forward off the spot. So a couple different ways to attack it, and both girls differently. Shannon straighter and firmer. Clara to the friction rolling off of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Help on the seven pin, down it goes. Getting closer. 
So you fans tuning in. So what's happening is Shannon playing directly here. All this is worn away in the front portion of the lane, but Clara is using it a little bit here down the lane, going that way to it. Not always a good direction. I'll change here at my finger, but she's using the friction down the lane to change direction. And Shannon really, again, very straight and direct up the lane itself, playing the shim. Play there. Good frame. Wow. Crunches 10 back into the pit. Those pins had no chance. And you hear her say lay there. Direct. You can miss inward a little bit if you are playing the shim. Watch there. Eight, nine, ten as it starts to change direction. And does exactly that. Lays there for the pocket. Max score at 223. For Shannon Clara, 246. There are the key stats. Shannon's open in the seventh. Yeah. Liked it. All 10 down. Clara needs to stay clean. And stay calm. And stay calm. 26, 9 spare. Strike in the 10th. Again, just try to stay clean. Control the pocket. 246, 223 max, both girls. One will walk away for their first title of this season. Five for Shannon, two for Clara. Could have been worse. Two eight double wood. As Clara pointed out to us, before she had the finger injury, she thought she was in line to have a great season on tour. So it yes. surprised her that she's in this spot trying for her first championship of the year. It was. You see, off the Clara's hand, I don't think she quite caught it or had a clean release at the bottom where she really rotated through the ball. A little lazy down the lane. That's why the ball did not recover. She was. She was on the making of having a great season. In December, the event, she the world singles, she bowled very well there, and that's where she had the ankle injury. And then just about March, early April is when she had the tendon pull on her finger. Got to handle this double wood. Careful. Got it. Two eight down. Well done. So 226 now, max score would still shut out Shannon O'Keefe if she strikes out. One high shot on the left lane when she left the three, six, seven and made it. Double and eight pins. Will give her enough to shut out Shannon O'Keefe and win her title. Tenth frame. Get that. Watch out. Big four up instead. A dramatic shift for Shannon on the bench. Wow. From back here, just like she threw it a pinch slow. Off her hand, around the side of it. Hits that hook spot. Where normally it'd be a four pin or something makeable. Big for the Richard Nixon. Seven. Six ten stands though. Finishes with a two hundred. Nine spare nine. That's what Shannon needs. Just like that. That would give her a two oh one. And a one pin victory. She looks relaxed. Looks confident. Seven pin. Little loft on that one. Good amount of grip pressure. Directly on line. Kept it on its path. Needs to make the spare. And 
nine pins to win. Shot and spare. So nine pins will win it. Eight pins would mean a tie. Seven. Would mean a loss. She wouldn't win. That's oh. what's at stake here, last shot. Her worst leave so far has been that 7-10, I believe. Two pin, two pin. She's been able to control the pocket, so nine pin will win. Needs nine for the victory. Has 10 and has the title. Shannon O'Keefe wins the 2017 PWBA St. Petersburg Clearwater Open. What a finish. Shannon O'Keefe, overcome by emotion. Once again, so a much. tour champion. Stuck. And last shot to clinch it. All 10 down. She's the winner. Kevin Krause and Sarah Kirchberg celebrate trophy presentation for Shannon O'Keefe winning her fifth career PWBA Tour title. We'll wrap things up on CBS Sports Network right after this celebration time for Shannon O'Keefe. How was school today? Hi, Dad.